I'm not a Buddhist, and yet I am. If China or Japan or Ceylon follow the teachings of the great master, India worships him as a god. You have just now heard that I am going to criticize Buddhism. Our views about Buddha are that he was not understood properly by his disciples. The relation between Hinduism, by Hinduism I mean the religion of Vedas, and what is called Buddhism at the present day is nearly the same as between Judaism and Christianity. Jesus Christ was a Jew and Shakyamuni was a Hindu. The Jews rejected Jesus Christ and the Hindus have accepted Shakyamuni as God and worship him. But the real difference that we Hindus want to show between modern Buddhism and what we should understand as the teachings of Lord Buddha lies principally in this. Shakyamuni came to preach nothing new. It was his own followers who didn't realize the import of his teachings. Again, I repeat, Shakyamuni came not to destroy, but he was the fulfillment. The religion of Hindus is divided into two parts, the ceremonial and the spiritual. The spiritual portion is specially studied by the monk. In that, there is no caste. A man from the highest caste and a man from the lowest may become a monk in India. In religion, there is no caste. Caste is simply a social institution. Shakyamuni himself was a monk and it was his glory that he had the large heartedness to bring out the truth from the hidden Vedas and through them the broadcast all over the world. He was the first being in the world who brought missionarizing into practice. The great glory of the Master lay in the wonderful sympathy for everybody, especially for the ignorant and poor. Some of the disciples were Brahmins. When Buddha was teaching, Sanskrit was no more the spoken language in India. Some of the Buddha's Brahmins disciples wanted to translate his teachings into Sanskrit, but he distinctly told them, I am for the poor. Let me speak in the tongue of the common people. And so to this, the day the great bulk of his teachings are in the vernacular of that day in India. Whatever may be the position of philosophy, whatever may be the position of metaphysics, so long as there is such a thing as weakness in the human heart, so long as there is a cry going out of the heart of man, there shall be faith in God. On the philosophic side, the disciples of the great master dashed themselves against the eternal rocks of the Vedas and couldn't crush them. And on the other side, they took away from the nation that eternal God to which everyone clings so fondly. And the result was that Buddhism had to die a natural death in India. At the present day, there is not one who calls oneself a Buddhist in India, the land of its birth. But at the same time, Brahmanism lost something, that reforming zeal, that wonderful sympathy and charity for everybody. A Greek historian who wrote about India of that time was led to say that no Hindu was known to tell an untruth. Hinduism can't live without Buddhism, nor Buddhism without Hinduism. Then realize what the separation has shown to us, that the Buddhist can't stand without the brain and philosophy of the Brahmins, nor the Brahmin without the heart of the Buddhist. The separation between the Buddhist and the Brahmins is the cause of the downfall of India. That is why India has been the slave of conquerors for the last thousand years. Let us then join the wonderful intellect of the Brahmins with the heart, the noble soul, the wonderful humanizing power of the great master.